Hi everyone, it's Eleanor here from Professional Beauty and today we are joined by Hilary Orr who is the Employment Engagement Leader at the Manchester College and we're going to be talking about how to make work experience work in your salon and the ways that we can inspire the next generation into the beauty industry. So thank you so much for joining us today Hilary. Thank you very much, yeah, thank you. I look forward to uh, working with you on this webinar today. Yeah, very okay. interesting subject for me. It's really great to have you and I think, yeah, it's going to be a really interesting topic to discuss. So to kick things off, really, in the current climate, what are some of the challenges facing beauty students at the moment? Yeah, um, there are quite a few post-COVID challenges um, in the industry at the moment. Obviously, the government has delayed the opening of uh, those beauticians who specialise in facial treatments, you know, i.e. your threading, semi-permanent, your makeup, your facials. This is impacting on businesses as a whole. Uh, and their ability to open and employ staff, which we as a college are very aware of, meaning that our students who've subsequently completed their courses haven't necessarily got the option to go out and find employment. So that's quite a big impact. It's an uncertain time for students who have finished, but also those who are about to start their studies because they're thinking, well, you know, are all these beauty salons are shut. You know, how does that impact on me about to progress with my study program? So they might be feeling unsure, those particular students who have just engaged in those study programs. Uh, they're thinking, have they, is it the right course that they're going to study? So we as a college are out there to support those students, particularly our students. Uh, we want to give them reassurance and offer them careers guidance where necessary. Students will be feeling apprehensive. Uh, there is lots of new ways of working ahead um, post-COVID. I call it post-COVID because we've not quite come out of COVID yet, but I keep referring to it as post-COVID because we're always optimistic. Um, and when the government allows for the opening of beauty salons, I'm sure confidence will increase and the students will relish the thought of a career in the beauty industry. Making sure our students are fully aware of the necessary COVID regulations is quite a, an important aspect and factor for us coll as colleges moving forward. And obviously we will be giving additional training where, where as when required. Brilliant. It's definitely all changing, isn't it, in such yeah. a different world now. Yeah. Um, and so for students who were midway through their courses when lockdown um, happened, what, what was kind of happening to their courses in terms of exams and that sort of thing? Yeah, it's quite chaotic from a student's perspective because they've been with us in the main since the September and obviously on March the 18th they were all um, sent home or uh, asked to stay at home and not continue at college. So all the technical learners uh, with endpoint assessments will be returning September, October to complete their assessments and exams. That they will be priority. Some were able to complete observations on family members, but as you can appreciate, that's not always appropriate. Um, so, and also in addition to that, vocational learners, uh, I understood from tutors in the main have finished, but there are a couple of the study units that were changed um, to enable them to complete their courses. And that was done on a case by case basis. The minority that haven't finished, um, quite a comprehensive plan's been put in place by our college and no doubt all colleges throughout the UK um, to ensure that they complete the necessary treatments of the clients uh, as of September. And again, they are a priority um, because we, what we want to do, we want to ensure that those students get that, that qualification, uh, but we've got to make sure we do it in, in the, the, the appropriate way. Absolutely. And for salon owners who are maybe looking to recruit, can you explain why work experience is so valuable both for the student and the salon owner as well? Yeah, I mean, I'm a great advocate of work experience. Um, uh, obviously, we work with 16 to 18 year olds. Quite often, them, many of them have not had a part time job, so they're not really aware of what it's like to work. You know, they might turn up at college 10 minutes late, but they've got to learn how to turn up at um, placement employment on time. So I think firstly, firstly, for me, I think it's important to understand what the phrase work experience means. So at the college, um, work experience is an umbrella term. It's used for the many different experiences that a learner can have with an employer and that can relate direct, directly to the experience of work. Um, it can include placements where an employer hosts student from two days right up to 45 days. So there is quite a big difference for, for an employer looking forward. They might think to themselves, I only want a, a student for two days throughout the whole year, or they might be prepared to look at what we're calling um, T-level ready um, qualifications, whereby offers a, a wider 45 day placement. That gives that learner such solid learning. It, it's fantastic. So they are the placement aspect of it. And in addition to that, we've got the work related aspect. So that's where we work with employers under that umbrella of work experience, the work related, where we could work with employers, they could come in and do talks or post COVID, they could do webinars for us, Q and A's, 
we can help students with their CVs, uh, complete mock interviews. Now that might sit, sound quite trivial, but for learners, 16 to 18 year olds, they have no experience of what it's like to, to engage in any form of interview. So, although they don't really like the phrase interview, I tend to call it an informal chat, but um, that aside, it's still an interview where an employer is wanting to find how a student ticks. So we, we'd like to encourage those kind of formats, those work ready formats for the employer working with the student. The, student. the experience a student can gain from taking placement is invaluable. It gives them an insight into what it's actually like to work in a busy salon because we do have salons within our two uh, campuses at South Manchester and North Manchester, but it's not the same. You know, the, the clients are still coming in for their treatments, but they've not got you know, the day-to-day -day running of a salon taking place. Uh, they've not got the phone, constant phone calls to take um, and then dealing with the clients. So it is quite different. They get to understand the routines of a salon, you know, from the, the moment they open that door to the end of the, uh, the last client going, you know, what exactly their role might entail. They learn about current practices and techniques, uh, are able, if appropriate, to assist with clients, because obviously that's down to the, um, the, the salon. In addition to this, they learn the employability skills that we so often take for granted. So we talked about uh, being a placement on time, being on college on time. You know, when they're given that 20 minutes for a lunch break, they've got to uh, adhere to those 20 minutes. They can't be then taking 50 minutes because they've met some mates in McDonald's. So it's all about us instilling those employability skills with them. There are so many benefits uh, for an employer taking on a student. Potentially our students are your next, your next generation of employees. A placement can often be a great lead into a part-time job. And that quite often happens. I quite often work with students. They might do a one week placement. They may then get offered a Saturday part-time job or they might not get offered a job within that particular placement, but it gives them fantastic experience for them to be able to go on to another uh, salon and um, show off the skills that they gained within that placement. Um, quite often, I don't really, it's not a really appropriate phrase, but it's a try before you buy. So quite often with these 45 day placements where uh, an employer gets to know a lot more about a student and you know what their technical practical skills are, they might be thinking in the background, oh, well, they might have a, a part-time post for a student, but let's see how they go. So 45 days is a real good length of time for an employer to see if uh, a student fits within their business. I also work with hospitality and catering students as well, and, and they use that quite a lot in the hospitality business, you know, giving a couple months with a student to see if they actually fit within their business and if they've got the right, right uh, work ethos as well. Um, work experience is a great way to support students within the local community because quite a lot of our salons where I work in, in Manchester, Greater Manchester, they're in our own local communities. So, you know, there might often be the parents come into the salons, the st students may themselves go into those particular salons. So it's a great way to work with the local community. And also it helps to their career goals and strengthens relationships with their local college as well. Not forgetting that in the current climate, additional support within your business may be just what you need, especially with the additional COVID measures in place in your salon. Additional cleaning and procedures that students could support. So, you know, um, if you're in a beauty salon and you're having to spend a lot more time um, cleaning and getting the the prep rooms ready before and after clients you know we could use our students for that they could support the uh, front of house clients phone calls booking in of clients so that, that there is the opportunities for our students to support you uh, work experience works it works for young people who get the opportunity to participate in the world of work and can gain practical experience that will enable them to believe and prove that they are valuable and productive members of the workforce it works for employers who seek work experience is vital in providing a talent pipeline and it works for the wider economy and society. It brings more people into work and out of long time em for employment. So that's really, and remember, there's no requirement to pay our students. It is work experience. So, um, you know, the, the long term goal would be for our students to get gain some form of employment, but that's not necessary within the work experience work placement format. So, yeah. Amazing. That was really informative. And yeah, I'm Thank sure, you. like, as you said, um, all those kind of little things now that salon owners and therapists have yeah. to run with cleaning, like it, yeah. it is taking up more time. So to have an extra pair of hands yeah. to help with that kind of thing would be really valuable. And for students, how important is the work experience placement and what sort of skills can they learn to sort of gain their skills for the future? Okay, so Work, work experience placement is an important aspect of a st of student study programme. 
that's set by the guidelines of Ofsted. So all students have to engage in uh, work placement, as again, as I said uh, earlier, it can range from 22 to 45 days, or even longer if a student wants to stay longer and the employer's up for it. We don't, not, not necessarily a cut off at 45 days. Um, so they all have to engage in all our 16 to 18 year olds. And we do obviously encourage our adult learners, because we have a lot of adult learners as well, to engage in work experience. As mentioned previously, many skills are learnt on placement including all those necessary employability skills. We talked about timekeeping. I mean, communication for me is a massive one. So um, whilst we've been in lockdown, we've uh, contacted our students remotely, virtually by uh, contact telephone calls to do complete reviews on how they found their placement. So the longer term placement, the 45 days ones, we, we dropped in on them at the beginning of their placement, say that pre-Christmas, and they could self-scored themselves on where they thought they were. And quite often, communication was one of the ones that they probably scored themselves a four and five. So that's not particularly high. But when we completed, when I completed the reviews April, May time, it, it was quite amazing, really. So and communication, their skills, even from the basics that we think of, like that day-to-day -day talking, because they're so often on their phones, but talking to clients that the difference between they, when they started in October to when they finished in May was phenomenal because they said that their confidence had grown. They realised that they can't say anything silly because, you know, they're just, they're just talking to a lady, um, maybe one of the hairdressers while they're doing a backwash and, and they were familiarising themselves with more local affairs. So they were, in the main, communication is a massive thing for our students to learn whilst on work experience. Uh, team building, because they get to work with all different, whether it's a salon of two members or, or 25 members, there's still those team building skills. Um, using your initiative, that's a big one I always hear from salon owners. Um, how do we encourage the students to uh, use their initiative? And that's something that we work on in the college. You know, we say to those students, it's not really appropriate that you stood there for 10 minutes not asking to do anything. So, it's, so, so those skills are being honed whilst they're uh, taking part in any form of work placement. Students on placement I've spoken to have quite often learned additional technical skills. So they will often learn uh, sometimes more up and coming skills in a salon that they might not have been aware of in college. So they'll bring that back into the classroom, they'll share it with their peers, but also they're sharing that learning with the tutors as well. So the tutors are finding out something new. Um, students who complete the longer term placements, um, as I said earlier, they complete those reviews. So. Um, and it's really interesting to find out what the students learn. I was talking about the with regards to the communication skills there. Quite often the thought of talking to a client about general topics can be a challenge. Technical skills are also an important factor. So no matter what course they're doing, you know, they, they want to be learning those skills quite often by observing in the shorter term placements, um, a week's placement or two to seven days, five day placements. They're probably going to learn a little bit about how this, the salon runs, but they might not necessarily get to learn some of those technical skills. The hope is on those longer term placements, um, they may, towards the end, get more of a, a little bit of a free on, of the reins to see if they can actually complete some um, procedures because they do those in college. So, and obviously that's up to the employer to feel that they've got the confidence for them to complete that. Some salons offer um, like model days where they clients would come in and appreciate that it would be students um, completing those procedures. They learn about the current up-to-date methods, as I said, even by just observing in that one week's process of a work placement, they get their, their understanding, their understanding about the, the techniques, the products that might be available and things like this. Um, and also it's enhancing their, their bank of knowledge. So yeah, they, they do learn quite a lot. And it, and it would, you know, it's great to, to, to hear the feedback from the students when they've been on, on a positive placement. You know, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes a student doesn't, a, a placement doesn't work for a particular student, but we work with the students to make sure that their next experience is, is somewhat better. So, yeah. Amazing. It's so such a valuable experience for those that are yeah. wanting to come into the industry, isn't it? And are there any misconceptions about work placements? Yeah, it's probably, yeah. Um, I think uh, I read an article a couple of years ago, the National Grid put something like, in the old days, work experience for students often amounted to little more than spending a week in a business, making a tape, a spot of photocopying and a quick tour of a business, and then they tick the box, box and it was done. And we like to think it's a, lot, it's a lot more than that now. So that's probably one of the misconceptions we, when we work with the employers, we, we try to... Um, Put back in that box so to speak. Uh, the definition of work experience is out of date and it doesn't work for businesses or for young people. So for work experience to really work it needs to be defined and that, that's quite important for me. 
when I'm doing a work placement with a, an employer, they need, to, they need to fully understand or they need to tell me what they want and then I need to relay that to the students. So it's almost like a three-way triage of conversations, really. It's important to always check with your insurance. So some of the insurers, uh, businesses will say, we're not insured for that. And that, that quite often happens. So that is a barrier straight away to that relationship partnership building with the employer because they say we haven't got, they may have public liability, but they might need um, employer's liability insurance. Um, and you can always check with your insurers if you've got that. And if you've got employees, then it tends, the insurance industry has agreed that students on work experience should be treated as employees for the purposes of instances. Um, insurance such placements must conform to requirements of the education act and any other regulations in force most employers liability policies will have a de definition of employer that covers students on work experience so that that's quite often a conversation i have with, with an employer and obviously if you were looking at taking longer term placements um, because we're moving forward to the t-level qualifications uh, where the expectation is that 20 percent of learning will be out in, in industry um, there may be opportunities to support uh, employers with that employer li employer's liability insurance so that it doesn't become a barrier for us and for our students to engage with them. Too much paperwork, that's always a big one for me. And obviously, we try to simplify health and safety, but we, have, we can't simplify it so much that we don't do it. It needs to be done because especially post-COVID, we need to ensure that the necessary risk assessments are in place. Employers with fewer than five employees are not actually required to have a, risk, a written risk assessment, but as a college moving forward, we're going to support employers in the, in the compilation of that risk assessment, just to make sure that we know that our students are, are safe. So there was quite a lot of comments about there's too much paperwork and, and we've got a platform now, and I think most colleges have, um, where you would input the details and it just fling it out to an email. Now, I appreciate not all salons have emails, but I tend to communicate sometimes with them via Facebook, which is um, another social platform we could use. We don't, want, we don't want it to be too onerous, the paperwork, because we want to engage with you, so we will try and work with you. And sometimes the uh, salons don't have the time to, to complete the paperwork. Well, that's fine. You know, I, I'm quite happy to go to a salon, as my team are, and complete the, you know, pre-populate the um, information prior to getting there and then just go through it very quickly with the business because I know you're all very busy and the last thing you want me is sitting there taking half an hour of your precious time. Um, in years gone by, students weren't ready for placement uh, and we were, they were unaware of their roles and the employers maybe saw them as, as, as getting in the way. And that, that was probably a couple of years ago. That's some of the feedback that I used to get. Uh, and we work hard as a college, as I'm sure colleges do in and around the country, to try and dispel these beliefs by working with the employer to ensure that our learner has the best experience. So it's all about that communication very early on. What does the employer want from this placement? You know, how many students do they want? What type of students do they want? And you can be quite... You can be quite particular in what kind of student you want. This is your business, you're entitled, you know. I, I, the placement that works best is the placement that has that communication. Um, before the, the learner starts where the employer might be able to get to interview them the ones that don't work is where well, I just go up to uh, Sophie the student say your placement starts next week there you go off you go that won't work because the student doesn't know anything about it and the employer doesn't know anything about the student um, we like to think that the student's adding value to the employer uh, whether that be supporting with booking in clients like I said before tidying up ordering stock or completing basic treatments I think, yeah, so I think there's quite a lot that, that hopefully the uh, employer could benefit from by engaging and taking um, a work experience student, yeah. Absolutely, and it sounds like that conversation is really important in kind of yeah. outlining what the student will get out of it and what the yeah. employer will get out of it too. Yeah. So it's a two-way street, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And if a salon is looking to um, recruit for a work experience placement, um, perhaps if someone's watching and they're thinking about doing that, um, what what would you say the first steps to kind of take to doing to taking on a work placement in their salon well first of all thank you very much that's that's a great thing if you're going to offer to take a, a work placement whether it be at my college or any of the colleges around the united kingdom it's a great thing that you're doing so i would first of all reach out reach out to your local colleges reach out to your local six forms uh, they may have a ded dedicated team of which i'm a, a team of 12 um, and most colleges will have somebody who will be able to deal with your inquiry and pass it on to the relevant uh, department and obviously um, point you in the right direction. It's good to meet with the college, uh, the rep, to discuss the types of work experience that you might want to offer, whether that be work placement, work related. Um, 
and it's a great under, uh, opportunity to understand your local college and the expectations of a student on work experience. Think about what you hope to gain by uh, having a student. Are you looking for your next employee? Are you looking to take more than one student? If you can't offer a work placement, that's fine. Could you consider assigning a staff member to be a mentor to support a student, maybe catch up once every few weeks? So I'm thinking post COVID here because um, you know, I understand that salons will be finding it hard. Some salons might have that capacity to take a student, some might not, but there's still ways that we could, we could work with the salons. And the, the mentor scheme is a great way for a member of staff to possibly via webinars, you know, via Zoom or whatever platform that we use Google, uh, uh, Microsoft Teams is, you know, could they, could they work on projects together? Could the uh, mentor offer support um, virtually and then at a later stage, maybe meet with the student and then come into the salon. So we're trying to think of all different ways of working at the moment. Your college rep will discuss the processes of how work experience will work. It tends to be pretty much the same, I would imagine, across most colleges. I always recommend uh, an interview, or as I referred to earlier, as an informal chat with the student because this is your business and you have to make sure you have the right student with the right attitude. Those two don't always go together, but the, the, the hope is that they do. And often there are breakdowns when students start placement because they were given the placement, which is what I referred to earlier when I gave Sophie that placement when she started on Monday, because they didn't get to meet the employer. Uh, important to have open discussion, uh, what you would like the student to be doing on placement days, your expectations on dress, attitude, required so we need to have all those in place before we start so that we can I can meet with the student or my team members can meet the student and, and then just completely outline you know what they can and can't do what they can wear etc and that's a good starting point for those 16 to 18 year olds communication is key and it's important that you have a link with the college a person you could contact with should you have any problems or want to discuss anything so as I said we are a team of 12 and I, I work with uh, hair and beauty students so and employers so if that employer's got um, an issue, then they should really have a point of contact. So they will have my contact telephone number and my email, and I try and, try and deal with those issues um, straight away. I, do, I did deal with an issue once at 10 to 11 at night that popped in my inbox and I couldn't leave it. So I, th I think it's important because uh, a, an employer needs to know that they've got that trust and that there's, there's a relationship there. You know what we don't want to be doing is putting students in placements and everybody's unhappy uh, that that's a detriment to the employer it's a detriment to the student and it's detrimental to us as a college because it impacts on our on our um, partnerships and feedback with ourselves students always like to know how they're how they're doing um, they might not always like the replies but they do like to know how they're doing so we uh, with the 45 day students we do um, reviews um, as I said we do a uh, a mid a point and an end and we sit with the employer and with the student if obviously we could do that remotely moving forward just to see it you know are, are the student and the employer coming on the on the same uh, track so the student tends to self-score themselves and then we get the employer to um, score as well and quite often they're the same but sometimes there's, there's quite a bit of difference so we would discuss what the difference is and then it's 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 a good chance for the employer to give some honest um, feedback and you know if the student isn't doing so well you know how could they how could they progress how could they um do that role a little better so yeah that's it really in a nutshell absolutely it's very valuable isn't it and yeah how can salon owners help students get the most out of their placement while they're there yeah uh from the onset work with the student to let them know what your expectations are and i think i've probably touched on that earlier i think i think that's really important, the expectations and, and what the role is that they, you'd like them to perform each day. Having worked with students for a few years now, they work better if they know what they need to do in a day. If they come in in the morning and they're a little unsure, because they've not got that confidence and those communication skills, some of them just yet, they, they might just go back within themselves and they m might look like they're not using their initiative, but because, and I think sometimes that's because they're unsure. Um, so work with the, with the student with that or else we can work in the background uh, with the student prior to them going out into placement. Breakdowns can and will happen um, at this stage and this is usually because things weren't discussed. So if after a period of time Sophie's going to that placement once a week um, for a period of four weeks and still doesn't know what she's doing, she, she might not be enjoying it as best as she could do. Well, when in actual fact, if we've had that conversation with them at the beginning, then she'll know that 
her, her duties for this particular day are to do these set items. So sometimes that might work better for the students. Um, as I said, um, in my experience, student works best when they know what their day-to-day -day duties might be. Not forgetting some of them have never had a job before. So I sometimes have to work with employers with regards to their expectations. They are 16 to 18 learners. Some of them may well have part-time jobs, but some of them have never worked before. So they don't really know, you know what it's all about. And that's the purpose of the, the work placement really to give them those necessary skills. Uh, meet with the learners during their placement, as I say, to complete a review. What have they learned? What would they like to learn more about? Sometimes a student, um, I've had students that worked in salons, hair and beauty salons, and they were hairdressing students. Um, so they were working in the salon to do that, but they actually had quite an interest in the beauty aspect. So I worked with the employers and said, you know, could they, could they work alongside you? So that's, sometimes that's good for the employer to know that uh, when they have those little mini chats with them. Ask the college for the details of what the students studying uh, uh, at what their course is, what they're studying. Sometimes that gives you a little bit of information as, as to you as an employer, if you're on the right track. So if you're asking them to do certain things, does that sit in with their study program? And we can share you with that. We wouldn't share the 350 page document, but we could certainly bullet point it down to, you know, an A4 sheet of the things that they are expected to learn. Uh, quite a lot of them are customer related skills as well, which they would presumably be learning in, um, in a beauty salon. Um, so that's it really on that one. Brilliant. And going forward, what do you think will be some of the key skills that students will need um, going into the beauty industry post coronavirus? Is there anything that you think will be particularly important? Yeah, I think um, talking to the tutors, I think one of the things is to be aware of health and safety aspects in a salon. That's a big thing for us moving forward. At the Manchester College, as part of their study programme, we're going to be looking at separate modules on COVID measures. So we're going to be looking at, at Barbicide and Habiba courses at the very onset before they've even gone out into placement and before they've even worked with the clients that come into the salons that we've got at the college so that that's a really important aspect because they need that moving forward whether they go into a placement a workplace or the salon one uh, they're going to have to be fully aware of social distancing measures and how to adhere to them in a salon and that's something that again we will be working uh, on them uh, in their induction process and on all the way through till presumably post um, pre-Christmas to ensure that they're fully aware of it. And, and as we're all aware, it, it's changing every week, isn't it? You know, I, I'm from the northwest of England. I'm now back in a, a mini lockdown. So it, it keeps moving. So it's just to make sure that we got our, our students are fully aware of the, the up-to-date guidelines. Um, they're going to have to be very adaptable, um, very adaptable to change, I, I think. Um, yeah, moving forward. Yeah. absolutely yeah and as you say things are changing so quickly week to week aren't they so yeah, yeah being adaptable is going to be yeah. <laughs> such a key one um for students and what do you think um in terms of courses curriculums changing to factor in maybe therapists new ways of working such as wearing ppe and social distancing do you think that will be directly taught in the course as well yeah, I think because we'll do the Barbicide and the Habiba courses, that the, 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 the COVID measure ones. Um, and then the Manchester College, we have an employability hour, which I've, I've spoken about, where the tutors will work with the groups supporting government guidelines on social distancing, et cetera, the PPE. We're currently created pre -recorded, uh, pre creating pre-recorded webinars, fully outlining all the requirements um, for particular areas. And as mentioned earlier, students will be completing the Habiba um, modules they will receive instruction on how and when to wear ppe because some of them are only 16 um you know they'll, they'll be it'll be a bit scary for them we've, we've got to make sure that we don't we don't freak them too much but they've got to understand the seriousness of why they need to adhere to these to these guidelines beauty kits um now will have all all the usual requirements but they will have that necessary ppe that they'll need for when they're out on placement as well so we'll, we'll put in those those things in place to ensure that they're their kit covers everything post-COVID. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that's it really. Brilliant. Um, we'll be moving on to a Q&A section in the moment. So if anyone has any questions for Hilary, then please do either comment in Zoom if you're watching there or if you're watching us on Facebook, you can pop us a comment and we'll put that forward to Hilary um, in a moment. Um, Hilary, in terms of what, what advice would you give to students who have maybe recently qualified as they end, enter the industry? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, 
I'd like to see, so I think it would be nice if the uh, beauty industry reached out to um, our students. So it, given our students opportunities to meet members of the industry, um, all our students are familiar with webinars, you know, question and answers, aspects, those kind of things. It, it's going to look, it's going to look quite different, I think, moving forward um, in many ways for the, for the students. Just give me the question again, sorry, I'm missing. Yeah, of course. Um, so what advice would you give to students who are recently qualified? Ah, uh, yes. So I, I would, uh, I would, I would suggest that they make themselves quite adaptable um, they need to be multidisciplined as well. They need to look at the different courses that they can do. So we've got the most colleges have quite a lot of short study programs. So they probably need to make themselves a little bit more multidisciplined. So if they've gone in just to do um, beauty facials, then they maybe need to think about broadening their horizons, looking at nails, looking at podiatry, things like that. So I think, and as the students could probably see at the moment, you know, quite a lot of because of the government guidelines, quite a lot of the uh, salons are actually um, closed, aren't they, until the, the government reopens them. So I think it's just thinking about yourself. I know that quite a few hair students, even themselves, they, they take on those shorter courses and look at, you know, your nails courses, as I say, um, your, your, your um, other hand massages, things like this. So they're short courses, but they might just make you a little bit more... Uh, um, let's see, what's the word I'm using for? A little bit more um, able to, to get paid employment in the current climate. Obviously, moving forward, we're hoping that everything changes quite dramatically and we're back to, we're back to that norm. But yeah, I think that's the advice to give. Um, the working day will look totally different for, for them as well. Uh, let's be fair, it, it's not going to be Monday to, to Saturday anymore. It's going to be Monday to Sunday. You know, we're going to be looking at quite different opening hours for, for students who've just recently... Um, past their qualifications. So that in itself is going to look quite different for them. The working day is going to look quite different. I know some salons, as probably you do, that are opening from seven o'clock. They've got shifts moving. You know, they're up seven, nine o'clock at night to, because they've got all the clients coming in and they've got bigger gaps because they have to tidy up, clean up and things like this. Uh, be adaptable and forward thinking because uh, we don't know how long uh, COVID is going to be here for. So it's something we've got to work with at the moment. Yeah. Absolutely. And how as an industry can we help to introduce the next generation of beauty students into the industry? What can we kind of do to inspire people who may be looking towards studying a course in college? Yeah. I think I probably jumped on this one before actually. Uh, but um, give our students opportunities to meet members of the industry. So uh, our students are very adept at, um, at webinars at the moment, Q&A sessions, you know, not in person, you know, jump into a webinar. Our students would love something like that. Um, you know to you know even a panel and the advantage is that students are quite shy and they don't necessarily like to ask questions on a camera but they love the opportunity to pop it in a chat anonymously that because they feel that they could, that they've got worth there and people will actually hear them consider linking with colleges working in partnership you can co-deliver courses you could consider sponsoring a course um complete with your own logo um, bring your industry experts into our classrooms. So, you know, in our employability hour, it'd be great if some of the, the, the beauty experts would come into our employability hours, you know, a question and answer session, or just talk about how you got to where you were in the business. Um, students work very well. I mean, I can talk to them until the cows come home, but they zone out after a bit. But, you know, if you've got somebody who's live and still working in the industry talking, so they love it. They love the fact that they're going to come in there. Uh, virtual mentoring, which I think I spoke about, spoke about earlier, that's a consideration. Um, our students are great, and with the right guidance and support, they will shine. They could help your business welcome guests and work in front of houses. There's a myriad of things that our students could get involved with. So, yeah. We'll Amazing see. advice. Thank you. Um, so we're now going to move on to the Q&A section. So if you have any questions, please do pop them in. Um, one question that we've had on Facebook, Hilary, is yeah. what does a college expect salons to give the work experience students to do and learn on their placement? Yeah, good question. Yeah, so for the students who work, um, do the shorter placements, the two to, to seven, to two to five days, obviously, it, I would say it's more of a shadowing. It's more of a, a getting a, an overview of what it's like to work in a salon. So they could help, they could help uh, meet the clients. Sometimes they need a couple of days just to get their, their feet in the door, you know, to feel familiar and comfortable. So there might be a lot of uh, uh, observing from a distance. Some students might feel a little bit more comfortable and might be, um, you know, once they've shown how to use a phone, 
they might be able to support you in that aspect. The 45 day placements is, is a little bit different because one, it's really quite long, but also that's where they're, they're moving forward to the T levels. They're hoping to gain those technical and practical skills. So the hope is that that's where that communication comes with the employer. And we discuss the kind of things that the employer might feel comfortable that their, the students might be able to engage in. It might be that the employer might want to come into the salon one day in the college uh, or into the classroom and, and observe the kind of skills that the students are doing and if they feel comfortable with our, our, our students then being able to carry out those um those I think of the word now um those therapies with with the students or or, or what are the whatever the um employer seems deems necessary but it, it, it's i wouldn't expect a um a salon to take a student from the, from the go-get and say right well you can go and do a facial you can go and do a massage because that that's not the expectation over those 45 days is the hope is that towards the end of it once they've learned those skills together with college and with the employer the employer will feel comfortable in offering that to a potential student amazing and another face um facebook question that we've had is um have you found the students have done better having pre-recorded lessons that they can watch over and over again if needed and moving forward learning platforms are online as well do you um, see any difference in the learning um it, it's all to do with engagement isn't it and i'm not i'm not actually a tutor i i work with the students who do their employability but i'm aware that um for the pre pre-recorded ones um they do like to take part but obviously it's very much one-sided because they're just viewing you don't actually know how much they're taking part in because they're just watching it as if they're watching a television screen but that en engagement where you've got a, a google classroom for example where the teacher is aware who's on i, I do believe that, that works quite well as well and moving forward post-covid we're going to be using a, a lot more of these webinars so i for example would usually go into an employability hour so i we've got nine campuses at manchester college so i would usually go not all of them, but I would go to quite a few of them and, and uh, go into the classes to see them. But moving forward, I would probably drop into their employability sessions by uh, a virtual platform. Um, we would probably use Microsoft Teams uh, and then we could have uh, discussions. Um, using the chat facility though, I, I, I do believe that the students do like that, that engagement aspect of it. They can ask questions sometimes they might not feel that they might have been appropriate to do before because they feel that the camera's always on them when they when they ask a question but yeah we're, we're, as a college and the colleges around the country we're trying to be a little bit more adaptable uh, to work and move forward with uh, how covid has changed us all in our teaching methods and i'm sure aspects some many aspects of it will will stay yeah absolutely um, another question that we've had is um, from Sandy and she's asked, um, can you clarify how you as a college are helping salons who don't have the correct employment insurance to take students for work experience? She says that she has this barrier a lot. I know we touched yeah. on that a bit earlier, didn't yeah. we? Could you um, yeah. talk us through that again? Yeah, so I appreciate that one quite often with you working with this, a smaller uh, salons, it's quite a financial impact to um, take on a uh, employer's liability insurance but unfortunately for us as a college it's a, it's a necessary requirement of them taking part in a placement obviously you've got the public liability but the employer's liability is quite an important aspect of it but there, 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 there may be opportunities for us to financially support um, employers and salons who wish to take the longer term placement so we talk about these t-level uh, programs so that's um, a flip side of an apprenticeship where 20 percent will be out on a placement and 80 percent will be in college and with that comes additional funding so that the, there is conversations to be had because we don't want it to be a barrier you know if you as an employer are saying you know we're quite more than willing to take a student then we need to be working with you to to, to ensure that that student and you get the opportunity to work together. So there are options and that's probably something you need to speak to your local college about to see um, if they've got uh, measures in place to be able to support you. Brilliant. Thank you for that question, Sandy. Uh, we've probably Thank got you. time for one more question. Um, and Tracy has asked, um, while the salons are still building their businesses and won't have students in yet, have you got any virtual work experience ideas that we can incorporate with their learning? So I guess what can salon owners do really to support the students if they aren't necessarily in their salons yet? Yeah, I think I think we're going back to the earlier ones, really, you know, uh, that meant, you know, mentoring a student, you know, can't get the students in there. Would you consider like 20 minutes a week 
uh, working with one particular student that we could assign we, we could assign you to i mean that's something that colleges would, would, would be would be fantastic and then we can you as a salon owner then could prepare them if and when you're ready to take that student into the placement it's just a great way of sharing uh, best practice with our with our students and you could find a little bit about them um, there are other ways as i said we could do we could do the webinars um, virtual hairdressing i'm not too sure you know could you would you be prepared to uh, for example video yourself doing a basic cut and sharing that with your local college you know you could do it on um ooh, just got you could do it on a webinar session uh, and then you could give the students possibly the opportunity to do uh, questions and answers during it um or you could pre-record something on how to do a cut and then share it with 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 a particular student or a class of students and as i say we have an employability hour so you know we would be we would more than welcome you to come to our employability hour to talk to our students about you know the current you know the current measures that are in place within your salon and, and what you do in your salon so there are there are particular ways different ways that we could work moving forward and yeah any salon that's willing to take and work with a student i'm sure any college would have you open armed to take you on board yeah Amazing, Hilary. That's all we have time for, for today. But thank you so much for joining us and um, talking us to about everything with work experience. And it just seems like there's so many different ways that you can work with students now. So it's great to know that there's so many more options for salon owners as well. But it's been brilliant having you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and if anybody's got any further questions, I'm sure if you pass them by the host, I'm sure you'll be able to pass them on to. But yeah, it's been great. Thank you very much. It's been great to have you and um, this video will be available to watch back afterwards on our Facebook page as well. So if you've missed it, you can catch up afterwards. But thanks so much, Hilary. It's Thank great you. speaking with you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.